So now we're going to look at using the addition rule for non-mutually exclusive events. But before we start off with the formula, let's just go ahead and work with it so we feel comfortable with the concept. So in problem one below, I'm asked to find the probability of A or C. And according to that legend, I want a heart or a shaded piece. So as we look above, we would count the first piece, the second piece, the third piece, they're all hearts. The fourth piece is not a heart, but it is shaded, and that would be it for our pieces. So taking all my marks off, we would be counting the first three hearts and the fourth shape because it's shaded. So we would have four of our seven shapes to give us 57.1%. Here, the key was that we did not count the shaded heart twice. We didn't count up hearts, then count up shaded, because we would have gotten five pieces. So let me have you go ahead and try question two. Okay, so did you get six sevenths? What happened was you were looking for something that was a heart, so you're going to count the first three pieces. But then you were looking for something that was not shaded. So the middle piece is neither a heart nor a non-shaded piece, but you could count the last three pieces. So six of your seven pieces were hearts or non-shaded to give you 85.7%. So what we just used was the intuitive addition rule because we found all the ways that A could happen plus all of the ways that B could happen, but we didn't count anything twice. Now this is great if you have a visual problem or something really small that you can mentally visualize, but if we have a much more complex problem, we really need a formal definition. And the formal definition, if you wanna find the probability of A or B, two events occurring at the same time from a single selection, the formula states you find the probability of A plus the probability of B, but then you subtract off the probability of A and B at the same time. This last piece, the probability of A and B at the same time, it's the overlap. This is where the item satisfies more than one condition. So now let's go ahead and repeat that last problem where we know the answer is 85.7%, but let's use the formula. So first thing I would have done is found the probability of A, three sevenths, three of the seven shapes are hearts. Then I would have added the probability of D, five of the seven shapes are non-shaded. Now notice I needed to count the hearts here because I'm counting all the non-shaded. Also, hopefully it catches your eye. If I just added now, I'd get eight over seven. That's more than 100%. And remember, probability can't be more than 100%. So now, here's where I have to subtract off that overlap. I need to subtract two sevenths, the two non-shaded hearts. This is both a heart and a non-shaded shape. And that is another way of getting the six sevenths for the 85.7%. So let me have you go ahead and work on part two where you're finding the probability of B or C, but wait, be sure to use the formula. Don't just count like we did on the last one, work it out with the formula. Did you get 71.4%? Hopefully you did. So what happened was first you should have found the probability of B all the circles and four of the seven shapes are circles. Remember, count all of the circles. Then you would have had to find the probability of C, all of the shaded pieces. There were two of the seven shapes up there were shaded. And subtract off the probability of B and C at the same time, a shaded circle, and only one of the seven shapes was a shaded circle 
to give you five sevenths for 71.4%. And also, this is a nice one to kind of look at visually. So first thing we did is found all of the circles. As you can see, I just circled them, circled the circles. Then we found um, C, all of the shaded pieces. And as you can see, right here in the middle, we had one piece that got counted in both sets, and that was the piece that we had to subtract off.